Okay. I'm using a Zoom to record a PowerPoint presentation with my face superimposed on it, or just to the right of it, uh, regarding using Zoom in English as a second language lectures, in English language lectures, such as conversation lectures. And, uh, oops, okay. So the things needed for Zoom, first of all, uh, uh, you need a camera, a PC with a camera, headset or mic and headphones, webcams are better than the ones that are fixed to your um, uh, PC. Smartphones work too, and you also need the, uh, the uh, computer application and the smartphone application. So it's best to get students to download those ready to go so uh, they can start the um, lecture without issue. I send a pre-Zoom pre student a email containing the URL of my meeting. And I always just use the, um, the personal room uh, URL. Uh, be careful because there's a personal room URL and a personal meeting URL. And I got that wrong, I'm very sorry, when I gave, a, um, gave this lecture to my colleagues. Uh, there's two and they're very similarly uh, named. But uh, one of them's in a room personal room, the other one's a personal meeting. And I just always use the same one because as you wish you'll see, it doesn't make a lot of difference when you're using the free plan. I also recommend to students they purchase headlet headsets and which is essential on a PC or at least a mic and a headphone is uh, that they download the app and the program. And I also teach them some sort of gestural feedback for when uh, things aren't going well and I don't know what they're seeing or hearing. So I teach them to sort of do this gesture. Uh, the cross for uh, it's not going well and the circle for yes it's okay but they don't like to do that so maybe the um, the uh, nonverbal feedback provided by zoom may be a better way of doing it I also provide uh, audio troubleshooting and perhaps um, in the uh, description of this video I'll give the sort of emails I send to them regarding audio troubleshooting okay I'll start off with some problems with zoom uh, one of the problems is that Zoom is very spread out. Uh, it's spread out as a uh, system. It's got a, a web page, a PC or Mac uh, a program, and then applications for the PC. And it's also got different uh, windows that uh, open within, the, um, within the, the PC or Mac program. And unfortunately, the settings are distributed amongst all of these. And furthermore, when you Google where, where is the setting, you find that, um, that the main pages that the, the top of the hits are to uh, large American universities who have got a, have got a uh, pro plan, a fee paying plan. I'm on the free one, on the completely free one, so I can't complain at all. I'm not complaining, but depending on your plan will depend uh, what it influences where your settings are and indeed what settings you have. So finding the setting can be a bit difficult. This presentation is about for the is, is for the free plan. Uh, the other thing, the other problem with the teaching English is that uh, you need to be able to have a high level of very uh, dense uh, gestural communication, and so the video conferencing feature is an, is essential. And as we'll see, the breakout rooms are essential. However, if students are only using one uh, PC or smartphone, in other words, one piece of equipment to connect to Zoom, then it's difficult for them to use the video conferencing and to see a handout, and that is an issue. So perhaps I need to send people a textbook uh, by post with the risk of fomites, I don't know, but that is an issue. So ideally they should either be connected via their PC and smartphone, so they can use one for communication and one for the, um, for the uh, materials, or that you get some kind of paper-based materials to them in advance. Uh, another problem is the attendance. There's no attendance checking, and that's a carrot to join the uh, the pro plan. But I will um, uh, uh, do, divulge a way of getting around that, and uh, and perhaps uh, checking attendance in the free plan. Uh, unfortunately, um, Zoom um, uh, got rid of their attendance checking functionality, which uh, saw whether people were looking at the camera or not. Uh, some kind of, oh, that's unhumanitarian or whatever. I wish that they had been stronger about this and just ignored those kind of remarks because if I want to be an unhumanitarian or some kind of uh, authoritarian person, then that's 
something that I would like to be able to choose. And so that the people who didn't like that functionality didn't need to use it. But unfortunately, Zoom have phased out their attention checking uh, algorithms, which is a, a bit of a shame. Okay. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, okay, so first of all, it's changing the defaults. And I'll go through all this in with web shots. Um, you can change some of the defaults online. I'll go through the ones that I, I recommend to change. And the most important one, probably, is to enable breakout rooms because this is the this is the, the the reason why we're using Zoom in foreign language education because it provides the uh, functionality for pair work, which is very important that cute students can talk to each other. I also recommend that uh, the waiting room be removed in the meeting setting so that you don't have to let all the students in. Also that like a classroom, as far as, as far as possible, like a real classroom, I allow students to enter the room before I'm there. Uh, I also require a video like I do in a classroom. I don't allow students to come in masked or cloaked or inside a box so that I can't see them. Uh, so in a Zoom classroom as well, I require that they, I can see their faces. And I also mute their audio. Now, this, this is different to a classroom, and it's merely because that uh, students may be in a situation where they're washing machine or uh, traffic or there are background sounds that will disturb the classroom. So I, uh, so I require that uh, uh, sounds are muted on participants when they first um, join in. Okay, uh, now to talk about lecture flow. If you're teaching something like a uh, reading, writing or grammar class, then it may be possible to use a system like provide, as provided by a university, a asynchronous system where teachers give a lecture like this, basically, like what you're watching now, and uh, upload it to something like YouTube and then request that students would watch it afterwards. But uh, for a uh, conversation class, this is not really appropriate. There are some uh, TV conversation classes, radio conversations classes, where students are given the opportunity blanks to, now you try, and they're given the opportunity to shadow things. And so it's not utterly impossible. I have met people that have learned to speak English using such uninteractive, sort of uh, semi-interactional, um, asynchronous modes of uh, English teaching, but it's difficult. You need to be able to have face time with someone. So this is where the breakout rooms is essential. And uh, as I said, if you're using breakout rooms for the video conferencing, for instance, between student pairs, then it makes it difficult to see the handouts, but we're going to get around that somehow. Okay. Um, in a typical English conversation um, uh, lecture, you'd have a PPP, presentation production, uh, presentation practice and production. And the presentation part of it would be something like this. You know, you'd be talking to the students, you'd be showing them a PowerPoint, it would be showing them some um, video or maybe uh, playing them some audio. And that can be done easily using the, um, leaving the uh, grid-like main screen where all the faces are sort of on the same screen together and clicking on the uh, green uh, square at the bottom, which only appears when you mouse over on, on Zoom. And then you can shoot, choose to share a screen and you can choose to share physical screens. I have two, two monitors, or you can share the, uh, the window, the virtual screen, as it were, the window of one of your applications. I always choose a, a physical screen because I find that's easier to then, if I wanted to quickly move something onto that screen, another application, for instance, I don't have to go back to the share uh, button and uh, reshare. I can just move something onto a physical monitor. That's perhaps because I'm using two monitors. And uh, there's a red button, stop share, uh, which uh, allows you to uh, stop sharing. And having two monitors helps, as I was just saying. Okay, but here, and this is why um, I'm talking about uh, language education, is that uh, you need Zoom for language education. Skype just won't do. Or Google Hangouts, or is it Meetings, I'm not sure, is because it has this wonderful breakout rooms feature. They're nice naming that, breakout rooms. In a, in a sense, they're, you know, it sounds like they're getting out and they're getting free of something, but in a sense, they're being confined to a a sub classroom dungeon with one other person so they're break in rooms or confine yourself rooms to just one other person but nice naming and uh, they work and so i can just press a button very quickly assign all the students into pairs and they're left just one-on-one -on -one 
uh, doing some kind of practice or production work in the target language. Unfortunately, I can't uh, have a God's eye view of all the rooms at once or listen in to all the rooms at once or even listen in without uh, showing my face there. So I can't eavesdrop either, which is another thing that maybe this sort of, oh no, we've got to be humanitarian. It's a shame. I would like to be God and sort of, you know, flick between room, room to room or just sort of see who's... Uh, messing around and not on camera but you can join in the rooms and that's what I do do join in uh, give some tips and evaluate the students performance inside their, their pair work uh, video conferences so there we'll see that how to do that in a second uh, attendance checking ordinarily this is the big carrot I, I believe for uh, the pro uh, version which uh, we haven't purchased um, because it provides attendance checking However, on the free, pan, free plan, what can you do? Well, you know, I could pay my $20 a month. It's only $60 till, no, $80 till the end of term, I think. But uh, mm, I don't know, I, I may. But uh, the free plan, what you can do is take a screenshot, a uh, graphical screenshot of either the um, uh, manage participant side panel or the breakout rooms window, because that's got all the names of the participants. Or even better than uh, uh, taking a graphical screenshot, you can also use some wonderful uh, free software called Capture to Text, which will allow you to take a graphical uh, screen grab and then it will OCR that and give you the names as a text file. Uh, the other thing is in that uh, first pre-Zoom email, I should also tell students to uh, make their profile name their uh, real name. Uh, Privacy concerns, perhaps, but in a classroom as well, people use their real names and give and reply to attendance registers with their hands up or you know saying yes, and so they're divulging their real names in the real classroom as well. So I don't think it's much of a problem. <coughs> okay, now we're going to go on to the, um, the screenshots, and I'm going to just show the English version. So this is on the Zoom website, zoom.us, and you've got to log in, uh, get yourself an account. And then this is the top dashboard. And from there, you've got to change some settings. We well, don't have to, but I recommend you do. It's sometimes it's difficult to get back to the dashboard. You enter into your personal profile, and then how do you get back to the sort of the main top page, as it were? And it's a rather cryptic, a right pointing arrow that you need to click on in order to get back to the dashboard. Uh, that brings you back to the dashboard where you can click on the settings tab, as I said before. Okay, so these are the settings that I recommend that people change. They're all in the Meetings tab of Settings. So from the dashboard, you go to Settings and just Meeting and then scroll down. Okay, these are the ones I recommend that people change. Uh, turn on participants' vi video so that you can see who see them, and check their atten check their attention, and see that they're not just uh, doing something else. Uh, allow them to join before host, as I said before, so that like you know they can come to the classroom before you're there. Uh, mute the entry so that you don't hear their background noises. Uh, play a sound when they leave to everyone. I don't think a student should be allowed to escape from the classroom without everyone noticing, because that's in a normal classroom. You don't just you know go away, and so that's why I require a Zoom classroom as well. Uh, Nonverbal feedback, yes, that's good. Uh, especially Japanese students don't even like to do this as I was saying before, and, and Zoom provides uh, by default a thumbs up and a clap button. Perhaps you could make the thumbs up uh, good and the, the clap, which looks like a hand like that, the stop, this is not going well button. Or maybe you can um, uh, change them, I haven't investigated that. And now the most important thing is you've got to enable breakout rooms in the settings. I think this should be enabled by default. Okay, so here is the settings page, the most important one. If you don't do that, you can't start pair work, and unfortunately, that's what happened to me in my first class. I forgot to, or I didn't know that I needed to enable it. Saw some YouTube videos. I thought it was going to be easy, pressing a button, and I couldn't find the button to press. So you need to get into those settings and change the um, the uh, enable uh, breakout rooms. Okay, um, this is a, a typical meeting. Um, it's only in Japanese. This. And okay, so here's the meeting has started. As you see, for some reason, the computer I was on has shown my face uh, upside down. Uh, so uh, in order to change video settings, you can go to the video camera button at the bottom there and click the upward arrow and uh, change the video settings. And uh, 
there's a rotation button at the top corner there. You can also make your face a bit sort of uh, less pimply and uh, wrinkly by clicking on this thing. I'm afraid this is only in Japanese. So now I'm the right way up. Okay, there's also, vir from the same, um, uh, uh, the upward arrow next to the camera, there's virtual backgrounds, but I don't happen to use them myself, but maybe I will to show sort of grammar points behind me. Okay, and, uh, and then this is the classroom. There's only one student in my classroom, so um, there's only two uh, video screens there. But in order to share something, you click on the central green link. I haven't found that in English yet either, sorry. Central green link. And that pulls up a screen where you can choose one of the virtual or physical screens. And I just choose the first one at the top left, which is my laptop computer screen. I'm sorry, this is all in Japanese. Ah, sorry, there it is. So you click on the, the green button at the bottom. And then on one of your two screens, I click on this, uh, the laptop screen, screen one and uh, share, we'll share it and the students will then see it and, and instead of seeing everybody's face, they'll just see a couple of people's faces, including the teachers. But remember, and this is another mistake I made in my first class, that if there's sound, if you're playing a video, for instance, or, a, or an audio file, that you need to click on this, share computer sound. And this is what I mean about Zoom. The problem with Zoom is that the settings are all around the place and it would be great if every single, every single setting was on the web page so you could set them by default. I can't see any reason not to share the computer sound, so I would like to be able to set that by default on the web page. Okay, uh, this is breakout rooms in, uh, in Japanese and English, and here it is in English. Um, there's a uh, button that looks like a checkerboard at the bottom, and instead of resulting in the main checkerboard-like uh, screen, what it does is, is it breaks that up, breakout, breaks them out of prison, as it were, of the classroom and into a number of uh, smaller sub classrooms uh, and you can set the number and so once you as soon as you press this button you're asked how many rooms you want and I normally just uh, halve the number of students uh, minus one maybe I mean you know in other words you can't leave one person on their own so one room may have three people in it and then create rooms by the way the teacher is not partitioned off is not um, broken out into one of the rooms, the teacher has to join by themselves. Okay, and uh, then the, the breakout room configuration is, uh, is, is created. But before you open all rooms and send all your students there, there is an options button again, embedded deep within the Zoom system that you have to change the options here, not on the website. And the things that I change are, move them in automatically. They don't want to go, they want to remain in the classroom, they don't want to have FaceTime with just one other person, they're shy. So I move them in automatically. I set a time uh, that they're going to be there for. I used to use my watch in the classroom, beep, 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 beep. but here we can set two minutes and they'll pop back to the classroom instantaneously, almost instantaneously, when the two minutes ends. If you set notify, then not only are you notified, but you're also required to press a button saying, okay, close all those rooms now, close all those video meetings of pair work people. Uh, so that's optional. Of course, everything's optional. And also there's a countdown timer. Uh, when I first used it, it was, it was on 60 seconds. And I thought, this is awful. You've got 60 seconds to wind down their little meeting. And that's about half the time I use in pair work. I, I typically do pair work for two minutes. Um, so they're all coming back uh, one minute into pair work. I've now, the minimum you can now set, for a while you can set it to zero. The minimum you can now set it is to 10 seconds for them to say goodbye and thank you to each other. I wish it was something like three seconds. It's a waste of time. Don't, again, I think it's like, you must be humanitarian, non-authoritarian. I want to be a sort of a, a grumpy teacher who says, oh, everyone stop, come back now. Or I usually actually said in my classroom, say thank you. They all say thank you come back now and that was about three seconds worth of wind down but the minimum is 10 seconds so i set it to the minimum 10. okay so once you've done the options then you can just click on open all rooms and your students will be sent out into the rooms you will not be sent out uh, so it's up to the teacher to join the room and if you click somewhere next to the room there you have to click twice and you can join the room and your face will be in the center and you can give some tips Unfortunately, I've only got one student in my class, so I can't show you that. But. Okay, so join the room. That's in Japanese. Join the room. I call them brooms now. Breakout rooms, brooms. Uh -huh. 
join the room and evaluate and monitor. You can also broadcast to everyone uh, from this screen. Uh, this is the Japanese version, here we go. And for, you can give instructions on what they should be doing in their pair work. You could even give a list of questions or uh, some other instruction to everyone in all the rooms. Uh, I believe it's only text, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, there are two views in breakout rooms, and I thought that there was going to be at a point to getting it. Um, there are two views. This is the speaker view, and if you press on the top right, then you can get to the gallery view. And the gallery view is like a picture gallery where they're side by side, one above the other, depending on the rotation of their screen or smartphone. And I thought that the, the gallery view would be superior because then I could tell the students, hey, the person on the right is going to be asking the questions this time. Uh, or the person above or on the right asking the questions. Okay, let's go. But I realized after going through my class today that, this, that they always see themselves on the right. So it doesn't follow the order of the names in the breakout rooms. The, the person who's watching the screen, their own screen, they're always on the right. So this is one of the problems I have yet to solve in Zoom is how to uh, assign roles in a typical pair work uh, exercise saying student A and student B or the student on the right and student on the left and a normal classroom would say hey everyone on the right you ask the questions now but you can't do it so um, I've asked Zoom to either um, make the right and left follow in the gallery view right and left follow the breakout room order where the first student is on the right the second student is on the left or give us the option of uh, assigning A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, however many students in each breakout room, to, uh, so some kind of label so that you can assign roles quickly and effectively within an instant. Otherwise, Japanese students will be playing stone scissors and paper and wasting half the two minutes just on that, deciding who's going to go first or something like that. And I think that's all I've got, but uh, that allows, uh, allows a typical English conversation PP class to be held online with no infections and happy healthy students. I hope that was uh, useful for you. Thank you. Oh okay yeah so I, that's what I said there but it's not true. There's me. Goodbye.